what would it look like for someone who wants treatment, but they say to you, Dr. Jaffe, I, I'm not ready to tell you that I'm done. Sure. But let's just say I'm addicted to opiates as an example, or it could be alcohol. What, what is the approach that could work for someone like that who's not ready to say I'm done, totally. but I do want help? Wonderful. So first of all, that's probably 80% of the people that I get uh, to, to see, which I love because they've either never sought professional help before or they've done it so many times and it kept failing over and over. So they're now just looking for anything else and that's how they typically find me. But I can just tell you a story about a person that, um, that came to me for alcohol. She had tried over about 10 to 15 years to slow down her drinking, tried to stop here and there and she would stop for a month or three months, but it would never hold. And she came to me almost as a last resort. What we found after repeatedly working though was that there were a lot of things that had happened in her past, and a lot of things that she was unhappy with in her current life, and alcohol was used as a coping strategy for those. What I told her that I had told her in the beginning was, unless we resolve those issues, you're gonna wanna go back to something. So even if I help you with the alcohol, you're gonna find something else to replace to deal with these things in your life that you're unhappy with. Once we got to those issues, and they had to do with uh, the family environment she grew up in, and some of the other things in relationships that happened to her later on in life, she actually found that she didn't wanna drink as much. So she's not completely sober now, she drinks a few times a year, and her rule actually for her life now is she actually doesn't drink as a regular sort of occurrence, but if she goes to a wedding or does something along those lines, those are kind of her exceptions. I'm not gonna tell you that it's 100% success. Every once in a while she drinks more than she wanted to, but the beautiful thing about it is she came for what she wanted. Through the work we did, she decided that she, what she wanted was too much drinking, and she decided to almost completely abstain. Right? She has literally two or three, four drinking occasions a year now. And what I want people to understand through the book and through the courses that I teach is your version of recovery, your version of what life after addiction can look like, there are a myriad of choices and you don't have to get stuck in the black or white thinking that if I'm not sober for the rest of my life, I'm a failure. And we're running out of time, but the one question that I do have to ask you is alcohol also might be very different than heroin. Or I, I, I just can't imagine someone saying, you know what, I'd really like to cut back and use heroin four times a year, even though it may kill me, and that every time I stick a needle in my arm, I'm risking death from infections. So it sounds like you know, your method might really work better for certain individuals than others. Does it also involve the substance that's being abused? It does to some extent, but the question I typically get from opiate addicts, whether it's pills or heroin, is more like, look, I know I need to quit the heroin. I just don't want to believe that because I need to quit heroin, I can never have a beer. And the answer- I see what you're saying. And, and I see what in you're typical saying. rehab, you can't choose. There is no- It's okay. all or none. It's I've got Okay, you. so it's, it's, that, not, it's okay. not opioids or you. heroin. It's not opioids in moderation. It's that you don't have to give up everything like the alcohol. Yeah, and just again, I want to stress, let's extend it one level beyond this. That person, what they're really saying is, I can't fathom being able to handle the rest of my life the way my body feels, the way my relationships are, the way my job is. I can't fathom being able to handle the rest of my life without relief. So don't take away all of my relief. And I say to them, look, let's not take it away for now, but if you feel that way about your job, if you feel that way about the relationship, we better fix those. Yeah, we have to talk about that. Because if we don't, you're gonna go back to something. I might be able to treat your opiate addiction, but you're gonna go back to something bad down the line. I, I love the fact that you're open-minded here because if this many people are failing treatment, I always say the best treatment is the one that works for you. Right. The individual oh. and finding the right method, the right person is so important. Good news is if you all are interested in Dr. Jaffe's method, you're all going home with a copy of his book. It's called The Abstinence Myth. And before I let you go, a program like yours, theoretically you could do it in conjunction with 12-step programs and all. So it's, it's not an either or, it can literally be. Literally about 50% gotcha. of the people who do our courses and for certain people who buy the book are in some sort of gotcha. self-help.